Let's take a look at how we can create some boomerang type objects based on where we click our mouse. All right, so to start us off, if we just take over, take a look over on the left hand side inside of our scene. You'll see that we just have, we just have a basic node 2D, nothing special. A uh, static body for the ground that we're standing on, which we don't even really have gravity, so really we don't need that. But for demonstration purposes, we got it there for the visuals. We then also have ourselves a player with a small script on it that's just going to allow us to click and throw our, our object. And then a camera 2D that's zoomed in so that we can get a nice view without it being way too small. For our projectile, we have just our projectile, the bare basics here, which is just our kinematic body that we can manipulate, and a sprite so we have something to look at. Alright, so let's go ahead, jump in, and take a look at the code. Alright, so here we have just the basic player script here. As you see, we have our projectile scene being preloaded at the top so that we can load it in later on. Or rather, create an instance of it. Uh, inside of our process function, which process is fine, but if we're going to be having collision, maybe you could think, well, maybe physics process. Up to you on that. Uh, but uh, point is, you see, once we left click, we're going to call it throw function. And the throw function is going to get the mouse position because that's where I want to throw it. Uh, if you want to calculate the, a different position, you can certainly uh, do that as well. Uh, but again, for this, we're just using the mouse. Um, then I have creating an instance of our projectile. And then we add it into the scene and I'm adding it to the, the parent of my player because I don't want it to be attached to my player. And then I'm sit, uh, uh, simply setting the position of my projectile so it's not all the way up in the top left corner. It'll actually spawn where my player is. And then I call the move function and pass in the click argument, which is, again, my mouse position. So let's jump on over and take a look at the projectile. So with this, we have a few variables here. We have a speed. A velocity. I have a goal, which is going to be uh, our click position. I have a boolean for whether or not it's returning. And I have a variable for player, which I'm just setting that in the ready function. So once the uh, once it the projectile spawns into the world, it'll get the player and assign that to our player variable, just to, so I don't have to do as much typing. All right, so inside of the process function here, uh, we're just checking if uh, itself, so the projectile, the projectile, we're checking if the projectile's distance to our goal, which will be set to our clicked mouse position. If that is smaller than two, if that distance is smaller than two, then I've gone ahead and just printed uh, reach so I could see that but I'm setting return to true, and then I'm calling my return function uh, as well. And then we have another if check, which is checking if returning is true, and the distance uh, for, our, for our object to our player is less than two, and then we'll queue free. And of course, we got it. We call move and slide and pass in velocity. That way, we can actually have movement going on. So what are these functions here? Well, these functions are very simple. We have a move function that we called from our player script. And that takes in one argument that we call target. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to set my goal variable is equal to target that was passed in. And then I'm going to set the velocity uh, to be equal to the direction from my projectile's position to the target. That way we have an X and Y that's going to get us there. And 
and multiply that by speed. Multiplying that by speed is actually going to speed this up. Of course, it's going to go fast because without that, it's going to go very slow. Uh, if I come on in here and we go like this, uh, you can take a look at just how slow it's actually going to move. And that's not very exciting, especially if you're going to use this in a game. So simply multiplying that by speed is going to make a huge difference there. And again, the speed I'm using is 200. In my case. And now our return function uh, that we're calling. Once our projectile, our little boomerang, reaches its destination. Um, which you could also set this. I just want to say that you can set this from, if you don't want to do from your mouse position, um, you can also just set it so it goes in said direction of your mouse. But then instead of getting the distance to the goal, you can get dis if distance to player is greater than a set number. And then that will set basically a limit on your boomerang. To throw it out, it'll go so far and then it'll come back. So you could do it that way as well. Um, but for our return function, all we're doing is the same thing we did previously. We're setting our velocity. And that's just going to get set the uh, velocity based on the direction from our projectile's current position to the player's position, and then, of course, multiplying that by speed. So, again, our player left clicks. We spawn it into the world. We call the move function. The move function sets the goal equal to where we clicked on the screen. We set our velocity based on the direction from our player to, or sorry, the direction from our projectile spawn location to where we clicked. Multiply it by speed to speed it up so it's not going extremely slow. And then takes us up here into our process function uh, where if our little boomerang's position is close enough to the objective of where we want it to go or where we threw it, Returning gets set to true. We call our return function that we created. And our return function is just going to set the velocity based on the direction from our projectile's position at that moment back to our player. Multiply by speed so it's not really slow. And then if returning is set to true and our distance back to our player is less than 2, we queue free our boomerang. And that's all we need to do to get this boomerang type effect to it. Now you can go ahead and or set that to whatever you want. Let's go something much higher. Let's go with like 500 for speed. But that's all you really need to do. And now you got this projectile that you can use to bounce back at you. Oh, that one completely missed. There we go. This is how you do create uh, boomerang type objects, and I'll see you guys in the next one. If you have comments or something that you want to see, leave them down below.